be interested to figure out what it was that for me uh, triggered the how I you know how the, my media pile on was made, made me so anxious because in the end, like you, I thought I wouldn't really be affected by this at all. Um, but it was quite the opposite. Well, it, look, we're social creatures, and um, until we are very grounded in ourselves, we, we can be very affected by what other people say and think about us, you know? Because as children, we're so totally dependent on the opinion of other people, you know? And we never quite grow out of that, you know? This experience helped me grow out of it, you know? Um, you, you might profitably speculate or would do some work on that of, Yes, what was said about you was either true or not true or a combination of truth and untruth, but either case, or, or totally untrue, but what is it about it that triggered you so much internally, that perturbed you so much, you know? Because actually, it's just a, words, just a bunch of words on a page, right? Hmm. So what is it in us that gets so uh, riled up? I think you're right. It, it was it was the the opinions of others because I was going to move on. The last thing I was going to talk to you is is to talk about psychedelics and my my ayahuasca ceremony. But one of the things that came out of my ayahuasca ceremony that even in the depth of the most uh, extreme uh, uh, medicine journey, I still could he could hear um, could could hear my mind talking or, or, or discussing what people may think of me in this state. So I guess the, you know, going back to what you were saying, the, 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 this idea of what it is that people will think of me has played a big part. And as you say, I need to do a little bit of work and understand it further. But, but I suppose, I suspect it's had, it's had a lot to do with that. Well, I don't know agony your childhood, but uh, all I can tell you that what I said earlier in general, as infants, as young children, we're completely dependent on how other people see us. I had a Soviet childhood, <laughs> so I'm um, quite a, a strict, if loving, but very strict and um, and, and and sort of and and um, ba boundary filled one. Yeah, I went uh, myself just recently, having been through. Um, a, a, a quite a tough time myself and gone into this, um, well, let's just call it a hamster wheel, uh, which I just n didn't feel I could come off. And um, I've been looking at different ways of, of dealing with it. And I just felt like I needed the sledgehammer just to, just to break this wheel. Soltara was recommended to me and I actually saw that you were an advisor to them. Um, and um, it was over a week uh, and there were four ceremonies and um, during one of the ceremonies, um, something came up, which I haven't really given much thought at all. And I'd be really interested to hear your opinion. And because th this presumably is the very thing that you talk about when uh, I, uh, I had a surgery. Uh, uh, I had something called the intestinal intersection when um, when I was four months old and um, and during one of these ceremonies, a vision came to me of a 1980 surgical theater in in Moscow, very sterile, bright lights, and a doctor's face leaning over me with a mask and, and the white hat, you know, and these old-fashioned mirrors. Um, and then it, and then there was a sense of fear, and then the whole was all, all, all blacked out. And I, I never really asked my mother about this, which is quite strange in itself that I've never really asked her about the surgery. I've got a huge scar on my stomach, even though it was done when I was four months old. Maybe they forgot the stitching in there, uh, I sometimes think. But um, she told me that I was left in the box for four days, which without any access to me. And then and then after I, um, uh, I was taken out of the box, I was still kept in hospital for another three weeks, and she was only allowed to... Uh, to come in the daytime, so talk about the sleep training that um, is is a sort of <laughs> some, some somewhat popular in the West. I guess I got that by default. Um, so I'd, I'd be, in, be interested to, to hear your opinion on 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 that and and whether you um, it's 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 what you've been you were talking about earlier. Well, um, 
first of all, it's a highly traumatic experience. Um, the infant, um, if you look at orangutans or chimpanzees or, or baboons, the mothers are always holding the babies. Always. Um, at that time, you needed to be held. Um, you had this thing happening to the intestines, intersusception, where the intestine kind of teles telescopes into itself, and it leads to bowel obstruction and you know life-threatening condition. You needed the surgery. Um, being left alone by yourself like that for a child is sheer torture. And um, it would have left you with a sense of uh, deep existential anxiety, fear for your life, a sense of being abandoned, uh, a sense of being alone, a sense of being not cared about. Um, it, it would, it's impossible for it not to leave a deep impact, <clears throat> even if, and your mother coming and going, 